Hello, Ellie here with my sidekick, Davi, and this morning I finished the surprise third book in this Who All the Boys I Loved Before trilogy, Always and Forever Laura Jean, so today I'm going to talk about it. So as you probably know, this is the final book in a trilogy starting with To All the Boys I Loved Before, which is about a girl named Lara Jean who writes letters to the guys that she has crushes on as she's ready to move on in order to kind of let them go, and then she hides them in a hat box in her closet. And one day, the letters mysteriously get mailed to the guys, and all of a sudden, these guys that she used to have crushes on are approaching her, thinking that she's in love with them. And it's awkward and it's hilarious and I love this story so much. The first one came out in 2014 and it was originally just supposed to be a duology with To All The Boys I Love Before and P.S. I Still Like You which continues to follow Lara Jean on her adventures with these guys that all of a sudden are coming out of the word work. All of a sudden, towards the end of last year, I think, Jenny Hunt surprised us by announcing that she was going to be writing a third book and making it a trilogy. All I'm going to say before I go into my spoiler section is this one follows Lara Jean and the people in her life at the end of the second one as they finish up high school and are getting ready for college. One thing that Jenny Han said that I really liked was the first book started with Lara Jean's older sister Margot leaving for college and what that meant to her and the people she was leaving behind. And now it's Lara Jean's turn to figure out what it means to become an adult and make a life for herself. I am now going to at least get into a spoiler section for books one and two, so if you haven't read those two, definitely go Where Have You Been? and then come back because I'm not quite getting into real spoilers for the third one yet. Book three, which came out on May 2nd, we know at the end of book two that Lara Jean and Peter Kaminsky are sticking together and in it for the long haul. And we're seeing that in this one. We're seeing them still together months after the second book ended. As they get closer to college, they need to figure out if their plans are taking them to the same place or are taking them different places and how that could affect them. I did really enjoy the story. In the first half of it, it felt like an extra book. I don't know what it was. The first half of this book felt more like an epilogue than an actual book. And then about halfway through, we did finally get into actual story and conflict and things like that. That was really my only complaint. I also saw about halfway through where it was heading and exactly what was going to happen. But as I've said before, a lot of the times that's because that's how I would write it and that's the story that would make sense. So that's not necessarily a complaint. Anyway, I am about to get into my spoiler section, so if you have not read this book, go read it and then come back, okay? Don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Bye! Alright, if you are still watching, that means you have read Forever and Always Lara Jean, and we can chat about it. As I said, this book starts with Peter and Lara Jean together and being adorable, and Lara Jean just wants to make cookies, and <laughs> they still haven't slept together, which is honestly fine by me. And everything is kind of like honky-dory, and they're planning on going to the same college, but that doesn't quite work out. Which I'm kind of glad, because that would have been a really boring book if they're like, yep, we're going to the same college, and we're going to be together forever, and the end. Which was kind of my complaint, because the first half of the book was almost like that. First, I'm going to talk about things I predicted that, like, half came true or didn't come true. One of my predictions. She was going to go to that meet and greet with people from William and Mary, and John Ambrose McLaren would be there, and they would be chatting, and maybe a little spark would still be there. And I was half right. She ended up not going, but John Ambrose McLaren was going to go to William and Mary, so I was both wrong and right there. He now has a girlfriend, which I was a little thrown off by just because I was expecting him to be a bigger deal in the story than he was. But I kind of like that. It made it less about 
the old story. Obviously there were still some wounds there because Peter is not John's biggest fan, but I like that it didn't just rehash the story in the second one, which is nice. I don't have that much to say about this. Um, about halfway through the story, I remember I was sitting in my friend's classroom reading, and I turned to her and I was like, I'm getting nervous. Because we were already halfway through the story, and Peter and Laura Jean were like just starting to have issues. And I'm like, this is a little late for the start of conflict to be coming in, not just in terms of like ha being an interesting plot, though that's kind of true too, but more with being able to build the conflict, have them break up, and then build again towards a reconciliation, which I needed a reconciliation. So I was like, oh, I'm terrified that they're going to break up and just stay broken up and be going their separate ways, and that's going to be at the end of the story. But I was like, all right. If I know anything about Jenny Han, she's going to have a happily ever after for the people that have been clearly meant to be together for this entire series. So I'm like, okay, so they're going to break up and they're going to get back like right at the end of the story and it's going to be adorable. So I was fine for a while. I saw them building towards breaking up. I saw the distance and I was like, guys, you just need to hash this out. Like, You just need to have that conversation. You need to talk about it. You need to get into a big fight and then you need to fix it. The other time I got nervous is when that finally did happen, but with about 30 pages left in the book. And I'm like, this isn't enough time for them to get back together. Are they seriously not going to get back together in this? But as it turns out, they didn't need much time to get back together. They didn't even really have a conversation. It was just like, well, clearly not, neither one of us actually want to be broken up right now. So let's not be. Which was fine. And yeah, by that time, like, they really did just need to have the conversation. They needed to get all of their feelings out there because they were hiding too much. They weren't being honest with each other. They were noticing the other one was feeling things that they weren't talking about, but they weren't approaching them about it either. I need to talk about Peter's mom. What is her problem? I get it. She was just trying to be a good mother and take care of her son and realize that like taking care of her son is more important than her son's girlfriend, obviously. But at least have a conversation with him first where you're telling him like this would be terrible for your future. Don't do that. You'll figure it out down the line because they'll figure it out down the line. It's not like he's just gonna do it without talking to you first. That annoyed me. I don't remember there being an issue between Peter's mom and Lara Jean in previous books. Was there? I don't know, I'm gonna be honest. Pretty much the only thing I remember from book two was the game that they played and the scene when Peter didn't kill Genevieve when he was supposed to, and Lara Jean brokenheartedly is just like, okay, well, you are dead. That's pretty much all I remember from the second book. I probably should have reread parts of it before, but I mean, things were coming back as I was reading. I also, I could have sworn that Josh and Margot got back together in book two, but I might have just been making that up. But she has a new boyfriend in this one who is Ravi, who I really liked actually. He's a Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff, and <laughs> I love all the Harry Potter references. They made me happy. I was reading this simultaneously with another book that also was making Harry Potter references at the same time, so I, I love it. You could tell that this really was written in the past year. There were all of these references to current events, like Hamilton, and I don't even remember what else, but I just remember several things where I was like, oh, that's current. Okay, awesome. And, like I said, I don't have that much to say about this one. I did enjoy it. It wasn't quite what I was hoping for. I gave it four stars. I loved revisiting the characters, but I do wish there was more going on in the first half of this book. And I'm also still curious, obviously, how things are going to work out in the future. I wish we had had some sort of epilogue where we saw them still together a year later, two years later, whatever, because honestly... 95% of college long-distance relationships don't work out. And there were at least two or three couples in this that were planning on trying it. So I'm curious. I think that's it. Like I said, I gave this four stars. I did really like seeing the characters again. I didn't really talk about her dad that much, but I don't. I didn't really care about that plot line that much, honestly. Anyway, I will talk to you next time. Goodbye! Ellie and Dobby here.
here, like the video, come subscribe. Do it right now. Click it.